Hello and welcome to lecture 63. So, in last lecture, we started discussing the design of wind tunnel fan. That is what will be developed at IIT Kharagpur, sponsored by RDSO, that is what is called Central for Railway Research at IIT Kharagpur. We are having the details, this all details that is what is available with us in terms of test section maximum diameter of say fan that is what is required. We also have some constraint with the motor rating that is what is available with us. So, if you look at here, this is what we have started discussing about and here in this case, we have unknown parameters like mass flow rate, we have constraint with the diameter of the casing, we are not knowing what is the diameter of our hub. We are not knowing what exactly will be the actual velocity and other parameters. So, we have started discussing about the selection of different parameters and we have correlated that with say hub to, radi hub to tip radius ratio. So, we have correlated our radius ratio with hub to tip ratio and different axial velocity numbers. At the same time, we are having constraint with the rotational speed and that is what we have kept as a 500 rpm. Now, based on this parametric study, we have come up with say radius ratio of 0.6 and that is what is giving us axial velocity in the range of 43.75 meter per second and this rotational speed that is what was coming say 475. Based on that, we have made assumption of axial velocity to be 44 meter per second and we have come up with our rotational speed of 480 rpm. And that is what we have decided as our final parameter for doing further calculation. And in sense of doing the calculation, we have done our calculation at the mean line based on our fundamental understanding, the design approach for industrial fan, for say industrial compressor or say axial compressor for aero engines, that is what is remain same, it is common. Here in this case, this fan is subsonic fan. That is the reason we are doing our mean line calculation at 50 percent span. Now, this is what all we have discussed about. We have assumed our aspect ratio of the rotor blade as say 1.78. We have assumed our solidity as 0.54 and based on that we have started doing the calculation. We have done our calculation at the hub station as well as tip station because we have adopted our approach of free vortex design. Now, based on this free vortex design methodology, we have come up with these numbers. So, if you look at these numbers, say my diffusion factor at the hub, it is coming 0.41 and diffusion factor at the tip, that is what is coming 0.24. Now, here if you look at this fan, what we are planning to design for wind tunnel application that is what is expected to generate certain pressure rise. Now, we are not going aggressively in sense of doing design for such kind of fans. Like in the case of compressor, we are expecting our diffusion factor to be in a large number say 0 0.5, 0 0.55, 0 0.6 that is what is our expected number. Since this is what is a fan, we are not expecting such high diffusion factor near the hub region. At the same time near tip also this is what is coming slightly on the higher side. Now, if we look at our height of the blade that is what is coming 0.8 meter and for that 0.8 meter height and cord of 450 mm, if we consider the weight of single blade that is what will be coming slightly on the higher side. So, conventionally what people they are doing say this is what will be acting like a cantilever. And in order to avoid the structural problem, in order to provide the structural rigidity, people they are adopting different kind of concepts. At the same time, when we are talking about the wind tunnel fans, these wind tunnel fans they are having provision for changing of pitch angle. That is what is basically maintaining the mass flow rate to this fan. And at the same time, it is used to manage the flow velocity that is what is required at the test section. And in order to have such kind of mechanism, in order to tilt the blade at certain angle, we need to have pitching mechanism. So, my hub or my station of hub for the blade that need to be rigid or that need to be strong. 
so in order to address all these aspects we have done certain modifications in the design let us see what modifications we have done so here in this case like in order to address the issue with the structure with the requirements special requirements and weight the cord of the blade that is what need to be varied from hub to tip. So, there are different methodology, there are different guidelines that is what is available in different handbooks. Especially for the fans, what they say the cord of the tip should not exceed the hub cord by more than 20 percent because of centrifugal loading action. Second aspect it says the cord of the tip should not be less than two third of the hub value of in order to assume say in order to have reasonable size of the aerofoil as well as thickness to cord ratio variation for that aerofoil. Now here if we look at this is what is a special kind of fan that is what we are using for industrial purpose that is what we are using for wind tunnel fan. So we are adopting second approach in which we will be having cord that is what will be different at hub my cord at the mid section will be different and cord at the tip section will be different. So, we need to assume systematic distribution of the thickness or we can say we need to assume systematic distribution of cord from hub to tip. So, in order to address this issue what we need to do is here we have modified our cord. So, my cord at the hub that is what we have kept as say 450 mm and near the tip we have assumed our cord to be 80 percent cord of hub and that is what is giving my cord at the tip as 0.36. Now, here if you look at this is what is representing the variation of my cord say 450 mm that is what is at the hub, 405 mm that is what is at the mid station and at the tip that is what is coming 360 mm. Now, when we are modifying our cord what is happening our diffusion factor that is what is going to change. So, here if you look at my diffusion factor that is what is coming 0.41 and at the same time near the tip that is what is coming 0.27. So, basically in order to address the issue because of weight what we have done we have modified our cord but at the same time that is what is creating trouble in sense of aerodynamic loading and that is the reason why we need to address now this particular issue. So, what is happening let us see say here if we look at say this red color one that is what is representing when I am having constant cord. So, this is what is representing how my diffusion factor that is what is varying from hub to tip. So, here in this case this is what is representing my diffusion factor variation when I am having constant cord. Now, when we have modified our cord under that condition if we look at near the hub region we have assume our cord to be same as 450 mm and that is the reason why my diffusion factor is same but along the span if we look at the diffusion factor that is what is going to increase. Okay. Now, in order to address say like as we discussed we are not looking for aggressive design in sense of aerodynamic loading for this particular blade and in order to address this problem now we need to explore some other possibility and that possibility is nothing but that is to change the number of blades. So, here if we look at this is what is representing when I am having my cord that is what is varying from 450 mm to 360 mm near the tip region. In place of number of blades to be 12 now we are assuming our number of blades to be 16 and by doing so if we compare here this is what is representing my variation of diffusion factor along the span. So, if we look at carefully we can see we are able to reduce the loading near the hub as well as near the tip and we can say throughout the span we are able to manage our diffusion factor, we are able to manage our loading. Basically this is what is helping us in sense of operating range when we are working under part load condition and we have seen when we are having our system resistance that is what is changing under that condition also this fan need to work in a systematic way as per our expectation and in order to have that this is what is a modification that is what we have done. 
Now this modification basically we have taken the help of CFD. So when we will be discussing in next week the use of CFD in one of the case study, we will be discussing this modification of number of blades and how my flow physics that's what is changing and how it is helping. But at this moment we can realize we can understand this part. This is what is one of the way of changing the aerodynamic loading for the fan. So when we are talking about the industrial fan, when we are talking about the wind tunnel fan, we need to be very careful in sense of selection of aerodynamic loading throughout our span. Okay. Now once we have decided with this, this is what is a final axle seat or this is what is my final design seat. Okay. Now in final design seat, we know what all methodology we are opting for all the designs, subsonic fan design, say contra rotating fan design, compressor design, transonic compressor design, for all of them, this methodology that is what will remain same. Only difference here is in sense of having say constant span kind of configuration because my pressure rise expected that is what is say on a lower side. So here if we look at the numbers, it says my d hollers factor that is what is varying from 0.79 to 0.90. At the same time if we look at our degree of reaction, we can say that is what is varying from 0.82 to 0.93. So the meaning of degree of reaction we must realize here. What it says majority of my work that is what will be done only by the rotor. Okay. When we are having our degree of reaction to be higher, so more, almost all diffusion that is what we are expecting that need to be done by the rotor. Okay. So this is a kind of design. Now why we have done this we will see when we will be discussing design of the stator. Now here in this case as we have discussed, we are able to manage our diffusion factor that is what is varying from 0.36 to 0.23. Okay. And accordingly, we are having say variation of camber angle and stagger angle. So, let us look at how my delta beta that is what is varying. So, here if we look at my delta beta since my loading is on lower side, my diameter is larger. Just understand, just imagine the dimensions we are talking about say dimension of 4 meter diameter. We are considering our diameter for the hub that is what is 2.4 meter diameter. So, under that condition my delta beta variation if we are looking at this is how delta beta that is what is varying. At the same time degree of reaction as we have discussed this is what is the design where we are expecting majority of our loading or majority of my work done or majority of my pressure rise that is what will be happening only with the rotor. Now the question is what is about the stator, let us see. So here this is what is a design for our stator. If we look at for the stator, the assumption that is what is the flow which is coming out from the rotor that is what is coming at absolute velocity C2 and angle alpha 2 and as per our conventional design what we are doing my alpha 2 and alpha 3 they both are same and since this is what is a fan in which we are considering our exit to be axial one. So, we can say my alpha 4 that is what is 0. So, if we are putting that my delta alpha that is what is coming 19.74. Now, for this stator, now as we are discussing stator design that is also equally important for such kind of application. Now, as we have discussed in very first lecture and I was saying like purpose of the stator it is to guide the flow. Then later on we have discussed, we have introduced the parameter that is what is degree of reaction where we were discussing my half diffusion that is what will be done by the rotor and my half diffusion that is what will be done by say stator. So stator also is contributing in sense of diffusion. Now for this fan design we have understood my degree of reaction that is what is coming on higher side that is what is representing majority of my diffusion that is what is happening with the rotor. Now what is the use of stator then? The stator is required to support the driving motor. 
So we can understand if we look at the construction, it says like I need to accommodate my fan that is what is in a closed circuit wind tunnel. Now for that closed circuit wind tunnel, we need to accommodate our motor that will be on the back side of my rotor and stator combination. So basically this stator we are using as a supporting structure. Secondly, this motor that is what is having high power capacity say 750 kilowatt. So we can imagine once it is started running with it will be generating a lot of heat and that is what is demanding for the cooling. So my cooling circuit or cooling pipes that can be accommodated through this stator blades. So that is second advantage we need to take with. If we consider suppose a lower aspect ratio kind of configuration that is what will be giving the necessary strength for such kind of rotating device. And if we configure too low kind of configuration that is what will be having say larger cord and when we are having larger cord that is what will be increasing our frictional losses because my solid surface that is what will be large and that is what is creating trouble in sense of increasing the losses. So now here we need to play with the aspect ratio. Basically for such kind of configuration aspect ratio that is what is roughly been selected as 1. So if we are considering my aspect ratio to be 1 that is what is giving the height of my blade it is 0.8 meter and my cord of the blade or stator blade that is what is also coming to be 0.8 meter. Okay. Now in order to select the number of blades so as we have discussed earlier now here if we look at old tunnels, modern tunnels, most modern tunnels for all these tunnels the combination of stator and rotor blade that is what is very important. Now when we are talking about say low acoustic wind tunnel design we know when the blade that is what is rotating my rotor blade is rotating that is what will be striking on the stator. Under that configuration there may be chances of the wake that will be striking on the stator blade and this is what is generating lot of noise. So in order to avoid that kind of configuration in order to avoid such kind of situation it is preferred that may be one or two blade more we need to select for the stator. If we are considering even kind of configuration that is what is creating trouble in sense of say resonance and that is the reason why one more blade that is what we need to select with. So we have selected with the combination of 16 and 17 blade. So in order to have that we are having two different approaches possible. We can assume our mean solidity. So here in this case in order to limit the diffusion factor the solidity it was assumed to be 1.35. When we are putting that solidity to be 1.25 we are getting our number of blades to be 17. There is other way as I told maybe you can select the number of stator blades and based on that you can do your calculation for solidity that is also possible. It is your choice you can play with the numbers and accordingly you decide with but there are certain thumb rules that is what is available in open literature which is suggesting this kind of configuration to be possible. One more thing is the cost of this fan that is very important. Suppose if we consider this diameter fan with motor and stator and rotor blade it may cost in terms of crores of rupees. So reducing the number of blade for stator, reducing the number of blade for rotor that is what is also one kind of parametric study. People they are doing that study and finally they are coming up with the solution. Okay. So, as per the demand as I told as a designer you may be having many constraints those constraints we need to take care of. Okay. Somebody will say I am looking for wind tunnel fan it should not have high cost then it is your choice to decide with. Sometimes the structure engineer will say we are not looking for such kind of large diameter we are looking for small diameter. So if possible just try to accommodate small diameter fan that is what will be giving same performance. Yes that is what is designer's choice. Now designer he has to play or she has to play 
with the numbers in order to achieve the expected performance for this fan. Now once this is what is done, this is what is representing my rotor blade. If you look at the rotor blade, my camber of this blade, that's what is lower because my aerodynamic loading is low. Just understand the thing, my delta beta, that's what is coming to be lower. And that's the reason why my camber at hub, my camber at tip, that's what is lower. And here we can say, this is what is representing the staking of my blade about the CG. Be careful what we are doing here. There are some designs in which people, they are doing staking about leading edge. There are some designs in which people, they are doing their staking about, say, trailing edge. Again, this is what is designer's choice. But it is most preferred when we are going with, say, rotating component, we need to stack these blades about, say, CG point only. Okay. Here, this is what is with the constant cord or 450 mm. We can say this is also been stacked about the CG point. And if we compare these two blades, we can easily understand how my twist of the blade, that's what will be coming with. Because we are having change of our cord all the way from hub to tip. And this is what is representing how my dimensions, that's what is changing all the way from hub to tip. Okay. So, here this is what is very important for all of us to realize how you will be deciding with this number of blades, how do we decide with cords and everything. Now, this is what is a first cut kind of design or we can say it's a preliminary design. Later on using computational tool, you can do your study and you will come up with nice airflow or flow field study kind of study and based on that, you will be finalizing your dimensions. Once you are finalizing, you make the blade and do have testing for that. But you can understand, for this kind of fence to be tested, it required different kind of testing facility. 4 meter diameter. I was telling like for cooling towers, these fans, they are in sense of 12 feet diameter, 20 feet diameter. Just can imagine the dimension what we are talking of. Though these fans for cooling fan, they are rotating at low speed, maybe 80 RPM or 100 RPM. Same here also, we can see though this diameter, that's what is 4 meter, my rotational speed is in the range of 400 to 500 RPM. Okay. So, realize all these dimensions realize this understanding for design. Now, this is what is representing the stator blade as we have discussed. Since this is what is having say larger cord, so my thickness of this blade that is what will be coming to be large. So, here this is what can be used in order to accommodate maybe cables, my cooling circuit, this is what will be acting like a supporting structure. So, this is what is all about what we say of design for wind tunnel fan okay so this is what is one kind of industrial fan that's what is challenging in these aspects later on people they are asking for performance map with change of different pitch angles based on that they are doing their parametric study all those stuffs that's what will be coming but initially we must realize we are having one design point that means one mass flow rate and one pressure rise that's what is called design point we cannot have more than one design point. Just keep this in mind. Okay. Now, this is what is representing the design of say wind tunnel fan. Now, there are certain different applications of this industrial fans other than what all we have discussed. What are they? Say welding fume exhaust, fume hood exhaust, paint spray boot exhaust, personal cooling in a hot work area process cooling or the exhaust of machinery and or the system, force cooling and exhausting the heat in the steel mills, force cooling in the kiln ovens and forges, general ventilation using the supply of air and make the air in factories, foundries and warehouses. So, you know, like applications for this axial flow fan, that's what is not restricted with what all we have discussed up till now. There are so many other applications also possible. People, they are using this axial flow fan. We can say it's a part of industry. Wherever you visit the industry, maybe process industry, 
or say maybe plant or maybe you are going for the computational center there also you will be finding such kind of axial flow points so realize the importance of this okay now when we are talking about the industrial fan the specification that's what will be somewhat different what they are doing say the mass flow rate what we are discussing for axial flow compressor or for say fan now for industrial fans these people they are talking the flow rate in sense of cfm that is cubic feet per minute that's what is rated mass flow rate they are discussing with same way we are talking in sense of total pressure rise here for industrial fan they people they are talking in sense of static pressure rise for the particular system now for this system that's what has been represented in terms of say mm of water gauge or we can say this is what is representing in sense of inch of water gauge so we can say this pressure or your fan that need to generate sufficient amount of pressure to override the problem in sense of frictional losses basically when the fluid is flowing through the duct that's what will be having loss of pressure and that's what we are recovering using this fans at the same time what is the temperature of air going through this fan that is also equally important because we can understand we are defining certain parameters we are calculating our design parameters say mass flow rate axial velocity density area that's what is a function of this temperature okay same way the exhaust may be going to ambient condition that temperature also is equally important we know that's what is varying but still we need to have certain reference temperature where we are exhausting our air at what altitude this fans are operating that is also important you can realize what we are discussing is mainly the effect of pressure effect of density effect of temperature those all parameters need to be considered when we are talking say design of our industrial fan it says will the air stream be clean and dry air or it may be having some substances that's what is moving with the air now we can understand when we are designing the fan for say ventilation application for mines there this configuration also is equally important okay then it says will there be any moisture in the air stream suppose we are talking about say some application where we are using cooling okay suppose we are considering say cooling tower fan that fan also we are we, we need to have our configuration in sense of what is the moisture contained in the air stream so now if we look at in overall sense this industrial fans seems to be little tricky and different than what all understanding we have now this fans need to be designed and that design that need to be done by people like you and me but the design methodology what all we have discussed for last 10 weeks the same design methodology we need to opt for only thing is few parameters we need to realize few parameters few numbers we must understand now when we are talking about say hvac like heating ventilation and air conditioning for those kind of applications all these terminologies they are very important okay so you cannot say no i have done design for axial flow compressor for aero engines i have done design for axial flow compressor for industrial application i have designed for wind tunnel fans but i have never done the design for industrial fans so i cannot do this design that no should not come in your discussion and that's the reason why now in next lecture we will be discussing the design of industrial fan for particular application so in overall if you look at this course it has been designed in such a way that 
you will be having all exposure for all kind of pens that's what need to be designed with okay so here we are stopping with our discussion in next lecture we will be discussing about the design of industrial fan for special application so thank you thank you very much and be with us enjoy this course